So do you need another pan for making crepes? Hi, I'm Jed, and this is Cook Culture. So today I'm talking about crepes, and specifically a crepe pan. So I grew up with crepes in the house. We didn't have pancakes traditionally. I grew up in a European family. Pancakes weren't a, a norm, but crepes definitely were. So for me, that's what I thought was normal growing up. Everybody has crepes all the time. I grew up learning how to make the crepes, and I really enjoy a crepe. And I now don't eat butter, dairy, or eggs, so I make a plant-based crepe, which I found works just as well. So today I'm gonna to talk about a traditional crepe using all of the things that I just said, plus a plant-based crepe, and show you how a crepe pan is supposed to work. So first off, what is a crepe pan? A crepe pan is you know, a thin piece of metal that usually has a very small ridge to it that you use to cook a, a small pancake. You know, a, a crepe is like a pancake, just very, very thin. And it can be of many, many different types of materials. Every type of material pan out there you see could make a crepe pan. There's no reason why not. Traditionally, a European crepe pan, a French crepe pan, is a piece of carbon steel. So it's a, a steel crepe pan, uh, it's rolled iron, uh, and it works incredibly well for the job at hand. However, in North America, some crepe pans have thought have needed to be nonstick because cooking with nonstick is just easier than cooking with anything else. I am gonna prove and show you today that cooking with carbon steel is just as effective when it comes to crepes as using nonstick. Sure, the argument can be made that eggs in nonstick can slide out and be easier and all that sort of stuff. Sure, that argument can be mean, it can be proven. But really, when using carbon steel, and it's seasoned properly and use a little bit of fat because you're going to use fat in, in making crepes. That's just what the recipe calls for. Using carbon steel works better, well, works as good as anything else. I personally am a bit biased that I think it works better because that's what I grew up using and it's what I use all the time. I find the, the browning and the flavoring just slightly, ever so delicately to a crepe, it's just so perfect when you use iron over anything else. Now we're going to get into making a recipe, super simple, a recipe on making a, a traditional crepe batter uh, and then showing you how to use a crepe pan. Okay, so making crepes. This is super simple. If you know how to make pancakes, you can figure out how to make crepes. The trick is in the cooking of them. It takes a little bit of, of practice, but simple. And making the crepe, I think that's even easier than making some pancakes. You know, some pancakes when you've added fruit or you're making buttermilk pancakes, there's a little bit added complexity. Some people would say no, but there is comparatively to making a simple crepe. So I'm gonna get some heat onto my crepe pan and then we are going to make the simple uh, batter. And so I'm preheating my crepe pan under low. I've got a really high horsepower gas range here. So I've got it under low. You don't want to overcook. Some people say in, when making crepes, the first crepe is always a garbage crepe. You're getting the idea of the temperature and making the first one levels the temperature. That doesn't have to be that way. It can be the way. If you do, are going to do it that way, make a little bit of extra batter so you know you've got one that you're gonna toss. Um, but hopefully we're not gonna do that today. Uh, so I've got that preheating. We're now gonna add everything into the food processor and make a simple batter. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got two eggs, we've got one cup of flour, we've got half a cup of milk and half a cup of water, a tiny bit of sugar, and two tablespoons of butter. So we're going to get our liquid in. We're gonna put in, well actually what we're gonna do is put in our eggs and our milk and our butter. And then we're going to mix that up quickly. Don't need to overdo this. Quick pulse, that's totally fine, all done. So now what we're gonna do is slowly add in our flour. So you can do this by hand also. And when you're doing it, you wanna just put in a bit of flour at a time while you're mixing with a, a, a whisk. But here I like to put in just a little bit at a time. It doesn't need to be overdone, but if we put it all in at once, it can get a little bit clumpy. And clumpy crepes are not good. All right, so we're getting a thick consistency. 
without having the water in. I'm putting the water in last because the eggs are all different sizes. And if we have an extra large egg, we don't need so much water. If our eggs are smaller, we need more water. And so to get the right consistency, we're gonna do the water by hand at the end. Okay, so nice and simple. Little bit of sugar, like a heaping teaspoon. And we're done. All right, so our consistency is really important here. Right now, this is like a pancake batter. So we'll get half of that water in and mix that up. And we're thinning this batter out. All right, so half is thick. We're gonna use all of that water. So I've used all of that half cup of water in making that thickness. Okay, so some recipes will call for it to be rested at this time. So when I was growing up, the recipe that I first learned from, well, I was taught by my mom, but I also did have a recipe at home that I'd follow when she wasn't there. And it called to rest this in the fridge overnight. Um, I've tried, and I've tried many times. Did I find that worked as well? I don't know, not really. I didn't really find a massive difference. Um, I found that blending this really well with a food processor or being very particular when you're blending this, if you're doing this dry and putting the water and your, your milk in and your eggs, you just do it step by step by step, little bit by little bit by little bit. So we've got this consistency here. And I would say that it's like eggnog if that helps. And that's about where it could, it could go a tiny bit thinner than this. If the thinner you get, the harder they are to make, but that the thinner crepe you get. And if you're looking for a thin crepe, then great. If you're looking for a hearty thick crepe, then, then you know thicker. This is somewhere in between. I have gone thinner, I have gone thicker. So we're gonna go with what we got here. I think this is working really well. Um, it follows that simple recipe. And now we're gonna get this on to the crepe pan and make some crepes. Okay, so as you can see, this is a very well seasoned crepe pan. I'm gonna get some butter on there. Get that all around. So even up the sides. It doesn't need to be swimming in butter. Again, it's personal preference. If you want yours to be very buttery and, and a little bit slick, then you can use extra butter. Um, so I had this on for say three or four minutes while we were making the batter to preheat. I've got this at quite a low temperature right now. You want to cook your crepes uh, at, at about a medium, just over medium temperature on most stoves. The crepe, you want it to cook quite quickly. And so we're gonna turn the heat up here just a little bit and get our crepe batter on. And I've got a tiny bit of smoke starting to happen on the surface here, which is absolutely perfect. That's what I wanna see. Now I'm gonna get this on and move this pan really quickly. Okay, so the batter is a tiny bit thick. The way a midget moved, I am actually going to add a tiny bit more water um, so that you can see what it looks like when we thin this out a little bit. Uh, not that it's gonna make a bad crepe whatsoever, but I, I really like a delicate crepe. That's my personal preference. Some people like a thicker crepe. If you're filling them and putting something heavy inside of this crepe, you may want it to be thicker. It's gonna have more, more tensile strength. Um, the egg is definitely gonna help give it more body. Uh, so you can thin it out that much more. So you can see that the edge here is already starting to come and just underneath and over we go. So, you know, I might even cook that one just a tiny, tiny bit too much. Um, just a little bit more browning there. But, you know, a, a, a well seasoned pan with the right sort of fat, boom, that's easy. It comes off really that easily. 
It is just not a problem whatsoever. So just like so. And that guy is done. So if I add a tiny bit more water to this dough, this is batter, and I thin it just a little bit, my pan is starting to really smoke. So I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. And I'm going to thin that just a little bit more. All right, this guy is definitely smoking solidly now. I got the heat up on him. And I'll show you what it's like to cook one fast with a hot, hot, hot pan. And I need to use this hand. So on we go. Around our batter goes. All right. So hot pan, thinner batter. This guy here, yeah, it's a, like a little bit rubbery because of its thickness. Um, you know, it's, it's thicker, it's kind of it's squishy. Um, kind of like more like a tortilla. So more delicate around the edges. And that guy's, that guy's on. So it's about twice as long on the back side as it is on the front side. The front side, like most of the cooking of it has gone through and it's done. And so now we just go really quickly and just get it cooked on that side. And that guy is done. So the heat is, just want to regulate your heat. Like I was saying, just a tiny bit of a smoke but if we're gonna turn, I, it's always best to have this turned up higher than lower. So you got, this is this buttery paper towel that I've got just going around and around and around. So we've got that going on there. So again, what we're gonna do, got that smoking, we're gonna get that guy on, just so it's not even half the size of the diameter of the pan. And around we go. And then nice, quick, the thinner they are, the faster they cook. Really nice and simple. All right. So on that guy goes, and the edge is going to cook. So if you flip it over and it's a little bit on the edge, that's totally fine. But you can see how quick. So when I'm making these, I am making them as fast as my kids are eating them. So they're just like bang, 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 and they are the best when they are perfectly fresh. And that guy is cooked. So that's your crepe pan. What if you don't have a crepe pan? I'm talking about crepe pans today, but you may be like, eh, do I really want a crepe pan? It is nice, but hey, I've got a 11 inch Debye carbon steel pan here. Okay, that's well preheated. That's a little bit more smoke than I like, but on we go. And around in the pan. Okay, so, you know, I, I don't try to oversell cookware. If you have one piece of cookware and that does a lot of jobs, that's absolutely fantastic. A crepe pan does do a great job. It is nice and easy to get into. This guy, I can definitely do it, but it is a little bit more convenient the way in which it works in a little bit too hot. Uh, in uh, a crepe pan. You just get under it, there's that little bit more easily and it, it works just absolutely perfectly. Um, but like I'm showing you here, it definitely can be done. You don't have to have the crepe pan, but it does really make a great job. And what I highly, highly, highly promote is that you can do the seasoning on your crepe pan just perfectly and leave that crepe pan and cook nothing else in it. So you don't get any other flavors and you don't get any other uh, textures on there and it is perfect for cooking your crepe. And that is nice to have a dedicated crepe pan like some people like to have a dedicated egg pan. It, it just works so incredibly well. So, you know, as you've seen, both these pans will do the job. I can do this in a stainless steel pan. I can do this in all different types of pans. Like a crepe pan is nice because it is a de dedicated unit. 
definitely, definitely, definitely no, don't need nonstick for this. As you can see, this will happen in any of these pans and it just works so, so perfectly. Okay, so I get questioned all the time. Okay, great, you can do that, but what about making it plant-based? So crepes, vegan, absolutely. I actually make them all the time. I'm a plant-based eater, we're a plant-based family. I grew up making traditional crepes. I know the recipe off the top of my head. I've done it a thousand times. However, making plant-based, at one point in time, I thought it was a little trickier. Like I didn't have eggs as that binder, so what was I to do? I've come to realize it's really, really simple. Flour, a plant-based milk of some sort of st style that is thinned out, uh, sugar and salt, and that's all that you need, and it works out really, really well. So I'm gonna show you that recipe right now. Okay, as I was talking about before, in the previous recipe that I wasn't using the food processor, or if I wasn't to, I'd be doing it by hand. So I need a little bit of salt. I need a little bit of sugar into the flour. We got a one cup of flour, and we have one cup of oat milk. And so we're going to mix the dry together, and then we're gonna do little bit by little bit into the wet. And when we're all done here, we're gonna be adding some water because we don't have any eggs. So in the end, it's probably gonna be more closer to about one and a half cups. But what we wanna do here is make sure that we smooth this out. And so it's good when it's a little bit thick and it makes a paste. So that's the goal here is making a paste so that we get all of the flour smoothed out. All right, so that's the paste looking for, and it's a tiny bit chunky in there. And that's part of doing it by hand. I could probably blend it even more, but it will smooth out while I'm doing a little bit more of this. All right, before we top up with water to thin it out, we wanna add a little bit of either canola oil or grapeseed oil in lieu of butter. All right, so that's actually looking pretty good. I'm gonna throw a tiny bit more milk in there. This milk is pretty thin. It's box milk, it's not homemade. So it's pretty thin. I'm not gonna actually worry about putting in water, just a little bit more of the oat milk. Yeah, and that thins it just right. So just over like a cup and, a, and an eighth maybe. All right, so now we're going to put on to the crepe pan and make some crepes. Okay, so this pan is well heated up. You're gonna get a bit, little bit of grapeseed oil on there. And get that ready. Then we're going to turn the heat up just a little bit. I've had it on low just to preheat it. Just gonna turn that up just a little bit. And there's our batter. Okay, then we're going to get our batter onto that pan. All right, and let that guy cook there for a sec. All right, cooking through. And if we have the right fat and it's well seasoned, that guy's just gonna go straight over like so. So you can definitely tell that there's no egg in this batter. It's obvious. Uh, I have used flax seeds sometimes to try to make it bind a little bit, but I, I actually find the glutinous of all, an all-purpose white flour works just totally fine and there's no real need to it. Um, so just let it cook a little bit there on that back side. And there we go. 
right? So we're making a, a crepe. So we've got different of, you know, a crepe and a crepe. So a little bit more fragile, definitely. Um, this guy's more rubbery with the egg in it, and that's your biggest difference. So there you go. Okay, so how simple a crepe pan can be. As I was saying, it's great to have a dedicated crepe pan. They're not overly expensive. Making crepes is a ton of fun. They go with so many different things. You can have them for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Uh, so having one dedicated, and as you can see, it's, it's quite easy to use that over, you know, if you have a carbon steel pan or any other sort of, of a skillet at home, it does make the job that much easier. They come in a bunch of different sizes. So this is a mineral B by Dubaye that we carry, and they come in, you know, three sizes of their dedicated crepe pan and then a large 11 inch. I love big crepes, so this is the choice that I, I make. My crepe pan is a, is a large pan, and I really, really enjoy it. So there you go, crepes 101, super simple. Get yourself a crepe pan. You're going to totally love having it in part of your collection. Any questions, throw them below. Thanks so much. <laughs>